Hi all, I have a yet another amazing game from David Grosvenor. Fast time control, one minute for 40 moves. Uh, hardware, 2.8 gigahertz, four CPU against the GTX 1060. So Leela with the GTX 1060. D4 from Stockfish 9. We have a Slav Defense. Very solid and popular at Super Grandmaster level nowadays. So semi Slav in particular. Now we have Knight BD7, Queen C2, Bishop D6. Bishop E2, Castles, B3, and Black plays the thematic looking E5. White Castles. You might think C takes D5 here. You can check uh, the P the variation PGN in the pinned comment I'll give you of this video or in the description to see these variations as well if you want to play through them. This line is a bit harmless at the moment because of this check. And black should be fine here, can kick back that knight potentially, or not mind knight c7. If the knight uh, prefers the blockade square, it's probably best play. It's about even. Black can weaken the light squares and be okay, even with the isolated queensborn here. It's technically a balanced position. So actually, white just cancelled instead of testing this line with knight b5. We have e4, so an aggressive pawn chain. What's the significance of this? Does it mean. A guaranteed attack later rookie eight we have a4 again if we test this critical idea c takes here in this particular position after bishop b8 say bishop a3 knight f8 this is okay because actually with knight f8 to e6 the sensitive c7 square can be covered it should be an okay position uh, just to take this further knight c3 should be fine if white tries to break the center this should be fine as well for black and to kick that knight back and even play aggressively like this with a small edge. So it's not really worth it, C takes at the moment, it seems. A4. It's played knight f8, bishop a3. The bishop drops back, avoids being exchanged off. Rook fc1. And now a very aggressive and logical looking move, h5. We see C takes now. C takes an h3. Again, knight b5, black can cover sensitive c7 square with knight e6 here. And black's fine there. So we see h3, a6, stopping knight b5 anyway now, queen d1, which looks as though the pawn, something has to be done about the pawn. Lila just ignores that, knight g6, pawn sacrifice. And white takes it, maybe not seeing any dangers really of taking it. And this is a big difference, you know, between brute force chess engines and, and neural networks. There's a pattern here. There's an open road to the king. It's like a motorway to the king for cars to travel around. But it's very, very difficult to foresee uh, concretely how this is really damaging. We see after knight h4, bishop e2, uh, there's a build up on g2. You can feel the pain on, on the pawn structure already intuitively. Bishop e6. King h1, but this next idea we see this a lot in, in the old Kasparov games uh, when he uses h pawn. We see this idea in a lot of attacking player games actually, in general, in the King's Engine or other systems. G6, um, with the idea of King g7 and Rook h8. Of course, in the King's Engine, it's already available for King g7, Rook h8. But yes, to put the Rook on h8 here is going to put more pressure on this pawn chain around the King. And it's already pretty dangerous. This is a two move idea to exert more pressure on this little pawn chain. G3 is played. If we look at this already, it's dangerous. If we look at Queen E1, King G7, Bishop F1, Rook H8, we can see a build up here of pressure. And it just imagine Knight H7 now, Knight G5. And we've got one, two, three, four, five attacking pieces here and something's going to go wrong for white's king safety for example like this is an example variation uh, where black can uh, win the rook there if that's the best move and if a normal same looking move is played like f3 then white's king gets it after queen h8 and this line is very dangerous for example like this winning the queen so it's pretty disastrous what happens here if when it's not careful. So we have this move here, g3, trying to kick that knight away. So queen e1, black can build up basically. Guess what Leela plays in this position though, which is still very dangerous for white's king safety if I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. 
bishop takes h3 this whole lot, whole concept is really dangerous of king g7 and rook h8 to support what goes on on taking now stockfish played knight f1 on g takes h4 in fact knight g4 immediately is really strong unveiling queen h4 and threatening knight takes f2 check for king king and queen if bishop takes g4 this is devastating this line because this this is a standard mating pattern here and also let's see what happens after knight g4 what can actually white do instead of taking with bishop takes g4 if we imagine king g1 doesn't help bishop h2 check drag the king back we can win the queen but even better we can go for a checkmate here with queen c7 check yeah bypassing the bishop on d6 and then that's a desperate move just to delay the mate here nice mating pattern queen bishop knight check mate so yes this is really mega dangerous here uh, so let's have a look at that again so g takes knight g4 is devastating so we saw bishop takes g4 or king g1 they both don't help uh, so basically uh, knight f1 was played and now here knight f5 b4 and now king g7 blacks ramping up the pressure here king g1 rook h8 b5 and now actually the move knight h5 is played this looks at crushing white's pawn chain with something like knight g3 potentially white plays now knight takes d5 which is a very desperate looking knight sack but let's have a look at this position uh, if bishop takes h5 rook takes what's the danger well here queen g5 building up with queen g5 so here bishop g4 to f3 is pretty strong so for example here is a standard mating net with rook h1 and white will have to be like desperate here and it's just a standard mating net pattern so this is really really dangerous after knight h5 so ideas like queen g5 and then maybe bishop takes and knight g3 so white tried to do something about this basically queen takes rook c5 queen d8 bishop takes now rook takes queen b1 trying to at least get a center pawn maybe uh, but white's king is still in trouble bishop takes queen takes queen g5 we have now another desperate looking move rook takes f5 it's all over really if uh, queen g2 as an example bishop takes g3 is crushing for example like this with this move is absolutely murderous chat mating basically uh, so rook takes f5 pretty desperate g takes of course black is totally winning now a rook up and here the game was adjudicated as a win for black to see uh, an example finish bishop takes g3 is very very strong uh, for example taking here check and then the, this is a nice mating pattern i like taking here and then the rooks can check mate so yeah bishop takes g3 is pretty strong here it's all over this then thing helps just taking and then just doubling the rooks is enough to either win the rook or secure a mating net or both so yeah it's 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 all over it's going to be all over for example like this is uh, a chat mate so let's go back to the game end position so what happened here this is to me one of the most respectable ideas I've seen this this Slav being used in an aggressive way with the quick e5 e4 it's a very aggressive pawn chain sometimes the classic downside is the c file and things like knight b5 which is why I pointed out those knight b5 variations it seems with the knight f8 knight e6 was often sufficient the pawn sacrifice many humans wouldn't take this intuitively stockfish didn't see the danger until it was too late took the pawn created this road and it just required things like g6 king g7 rook h8 to ramp up the pressure to make it more tangible what was happening to this pawn chain around white's king so another great attacking game and very instructive in my view for an aggressive way to play the semi-slav defense so this is another toolkit for the attacking player in my view hope you enjoyed it comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much